tonight on Global National. Standing by a building built by slaves, an African-American is sworn in as U.S. President. I, Barack Hussein Obama, do solemnly swear. A new era for a troubled nation and what it means for the world. As millions descend on the U.S. Capitol. The 44th President of these United States, Barack Obama. The great expectations for an inspiring leader. Today I say to you that the challenges we face are real. They are serious and they are many. They will not be met easily or in a short span of time. But know this, America, they will be met. It has been a day of celebration in Canada and abroad. Global National. From Washington, here is Kevin Newman. This is a country that is far from finished celebrating its new president. Barack Obama and his wife Michelle strolling down Pennsylvania Avenue this afternoon to incredible cheers. And the party is far from over. It's going to go all night as a city and a country celebrates its new first family. Hello and thank you for joining us from Washington. It was so much more than a transfer of power. The inauguration we saw today was historic in size and scope. It was a triumphal day for African Americans long march for justice. It marked a new American approach to the world and a generational change in leadership. Our team of correspondents will bring it all to you tonight, but let's begin our coverage with our Washington Bureau Chief, Eric Sorensen. Eric. Kevin, as a staged event, the inauguration was exceptional, but as a moment in history, it was truly extraordinary. Today, the President of the United States is Barack Hussein Obama. Close to two million people can say they were there. Ladies and gentlemen, the President-elect of the United States, Barack H. Obama. And around the world, tens of millions more witnessed a nation turning the page on its history of racial intolerance, swearing in its first African-American president. I, Barack Hussein Obama, do solemnly swear. A blip when the Chief Justice shifted the words of the oath. I will execute the off faithfully the, pres the office of President of the, the United States. The office of President of the United States faithfully. Michelle Obama holding the Bible of Abraham Lincoln, the president who took the first steps toward racial equality, and Barack Obama, the president who symbolically completes the journey. So help you God. So help me God. Congratulations, Mr. President. President Obama immediately addressed his nation's economic crisis. Starting today, we must pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off, and begin again the work of remaking America. As Obama prepares to change direction at home, he signaled a sharp break from the Bush presidency abroad. Our power alone cannot protect us, nor does it entitle us to do as we please. Obama promising to seek alliances in the world. This doesn't sound like George Bush. To the Muslim world, we seek a new way forward based on mutual interest and mutual respect. Obama represents generational change and in a time of crisis, hope to a world with high expectations of him. He has ascended to a place that he seems to have some comfort with. He will compromise if, if that's what it takes. Um, but uh, right now he, he has a mandate, I think, to do, uh, to be a very aggressive president. The new president's popularity, even in Canada, could pave the way for greater cross-border cooperation on energy security, the environment, and the economy. Certainly, uh, um, we're looking forward to engaging fully with the, um, with the Obama administration. We rejoice not only in America's peaceful... There was poetry and prayer and memorable music. The challenges ahead are immediate and serious, but for this moment, Americans celebrate what would not have seemed possible a short time ago. Why a man whose father less than 60 years ago might not have been served at a local restaurant, can now stand before you to take a most sacred oath. So, Eric, as you said, uh, a great deal of emotion in this city tonight, but how quickly will Obama get down to business? 
Uh, very quickly, Kevin. Uh, tomorrow, he is scheduled to meet with his senior economic advisors to go over his economic stimulus plan that he wants to move through Congress quickly. Uh, he's also expected to meet with his national security advisors and military advisors uh, as early as this week. Uh, so very busy, very quickly, but with some, uh, uh, some few moments again tonight, though, for a few balls and relaxation and celebration. You know, his inaugural speech already being uh, compared to Kennedy, uh, Ted Kennedy had a bit of an, a health scare today. What can you tell us about that? Ted Kennedy had a seizure. Um, it was a shock to everyone, although it's, it's known that he has brain cancer and is, uh, and is suffering from that. But it seemed, uh, seemed to be uh, fatigue in this case. Another old Senate warhorse, Robert Byrd, also collapsed today. Both men did. Uh, in both cases, they are said to be alert and doing fairly well at this point. But it's a poignant moment for uh, Barack Obama because he is often likened to uh, John Kennedy and Robert Kennedy. Yeah, sometimes uh, history, uh, it's just unbelievable, the collision of it in moments like this. Thanks very much, Eric. Eric Sorensen uh, on the streets of Washington, D.C. tonight. You know, all afternoon, the famous Pennsylvania Avenue has been jammed with people and floats and marching bands celebrating the new president. In safer times, the president and first lady would walk or wave from a car as they moved from Congress to the White House. The Obamas made the trip in a brand new armored plated Cadillac and stayed in it until the final few blocks. And Global National's Paul Johnson joins us now from where the parade has been passing him by. Paul. Kevin, what a thrilling moment. This must have been for people who had lined that parade route, who were probably expecting that if they caught a glimpse of the Obamas at all, it would have been through the windows of that armored limousine. Instead, both the Obamas, both the Bidens got out of their limousines, not once, but twice along the parade route and walked along and waved at people. A real thrilling and exhilarating moment for the people who were there. Now, obviously, we're not privy to the conversations that go on between the president and his security detail, but Presumably, this has something to do with the fact that security so far at this event has come off exceedingly well. There were big concerns about it. After all, this is the biggest security event in the United States since 9-11, and there really haven't been any big problems. A couple of minor scattered problems across the district, but really nothing major at this point. The fact that Barack Obama was able to get out on the first day of his presidency is probably something that is really going to be good for him. These are the kinds of images that help to define a presidency that live on for decades. You can imagine that he was very happy he had the opportunity to do that. And I can tell you, his fans were very happy. Kevin? I'll bet they were, Paul. Thanks very much. Well, aside from where Paul is, the best elevated view of the inauguration was from the Canadian Embassy here. Hundreds of Canadians were lucky enough to witness this historic day from there, and a couple of them shared what they saw and felt with us. Beginning. It's very emotional, and I have a lot of friends here in D.C. who've been waiting and whose parents have been waiting for a long time to see the day a, a, a black man became president. This is something I just really want to be able to tell everyone that I have ever known or ever will know. It's something I did. It's something that when I'm 80, I'm going to be able to uh, talk to my grandkids about. <laughs> Well, many Canadians across our country stopped what they were doing and watched that moment when Barack Obama put his hand on Lincoln's Bible to take the oath. And our Mike Drillet was there with some of them. They lined up in the cold. Americans far from home. Canadians swept up in the moment. Washington was the other option. And since we couldn't be there, this is our next best choice. The demand at the 800-seat Bloor Theatre was so great, they had to turn people away. With much the same throughout Toronto in pubs and public squares. People gathering, not to watch the inauguration on a big screen, but to watch it together. Obama, Canada, Obama, Canada. The lyrics to this chant didn't change for two hours, and no one seemed to mind. Bottles of champagne were snuck in by people who skipped out of work and begged not to be identified. Cheers. Would you like some? It was a celebration not seen since, well, nobody can remember when. U.S. Consular General to Toronto John Ney was stationed in Taiwan for Bill Clinton's inauguration and in India for George W. Bush's big day. But he's never seen anything like this. Some attention, but not nearly at this level. From coast to coast, groups of people gathered to watch this historical day. Young students in Vancouver. Congratulations, Mr. President. University students in Calgary all sat transfixed to the TV. 
In Winnipeg, owners of an African specialty store beamed with pride. While in St. John, New Brunswick, hundreds were drawn to the screens in a mall. It was an emotional day full of smiles and tears. President Obama spoke of peace, dignity, and humility. Expat Americans living in Canada spoke of pride. Usually I lie and say I'm from Canada. <laughs> now that I actually live here, um, I'm, I'm actually proud to be from the U.S. today for the first time in my life. It was a day Obama could do no wrong, and he certainly set the bar high, very high. Tomorrow, he'll have to start living up to the hype. Kevin? All right, Mike, thanks very much. You know, it almost felt like that moment when man landed on the moon, a day when the world stopped to share a common image. In London, thousands turned up at bars and restaurants, literally hanging on every word and exploding in cheers at every opportunity. British Prime Minister Gordon Brown praised Obama as a man of great vision. And in President Obama's ancestral homeland of Kenya, emotions and pride ran extremely high. Among the young and old, this is a moment many Africans are claiming as their own as well. You know, this was also the most interactive event in U.S. political history. People were texting, they were sharing photos, twittering. These are just a few of the snapshots that were uploaded to the official inaugural book, and we received quite a reaction on our web, web links as well. Dozens of people weighed in on our Facebook page. One viewer says, I am proud to have witnessed this historic day. It represents a time of change and a time of hope. Another is so proud because now more doors are open for her grandkids to be proud of their native Canadian and African-American descent. And you can still leave your thoughts on this site or visit globalnational.com to email us your photos of where you were the day Obama was sworn in.